Yes, folks, welcome back. Welcome back to CCL Sports Cards. I am your host, Christopher Davies. It is time to talk about Heston Kerstad, and today I'm going to give you my best bull case for why he's a good buy, or at the very least, a player to keep on your radar. Heston Kerstad was the second overall pick in 2020, right behind Spencer Torkelson, who actually debuted for the Tigers last season. And while Tork did struggle, he did come on late, having made some adjustments when he was sent back to AAA. But we aren't here to talk about Tork, at least not yet. And before we get to Kerstad, do me a favor. If you find value to our research perspective in this episode, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. It has been one year since CCL was launched, and I'm so grateful to each of you for the 668 subscribers. And with that, y'all ready? Let's roll! Heston is a lefty, and I do like lefties. He's currently the number nine prospect on MLB.com for the Baltimore Orioles. Clearly not forgotten in spite of the very, very slow start to his career, none of which was really his fault. Heston was taken out of Arkansas, again, second overall, largely due to his power and a cannon for an arm, and currently sports a 60 for the former. That's big time power potential and a 55 for his arm tool. Now he was a bit of a surprise when he was taken second overall. And while it's public record that Baltimore had the reasons for saving money when they signed Kerstad for $2.5 million below slot, it cannot be overlooked that Kerstad was one of the top sluggers in college baseball. You ask me, that is just smart shopping. Not only that, but collectors and investors in baseball cards love the long ball, myself included. Now, first off, and much like every athlete drafted in 2020, Heston lost a year of pro ball due to COVID and league-wide shutdown. No problem. Still a pretty level playing field at that point. Then he gets myocarditis, which I actually had to look up and refers to heart problems and exercising and baseball-related activities are out of the question. So, 2021 was gone, too. Okay, poor kid. But eventually everything healed which is really the most important thing. He was back on track to start the 2022 season and spring training was going well until he was running down a fly ball and was hurt with a high grade hamstring injury. No baseball for 12 weeks. Bad luck just seemed to kind of follow Kerstad around. I think there are many who've just quit, but this kid did not. And as I've discussed in other episodes, resilience is so important and it says a lot about character. Kerstad came back with a vengeance, and I imagine a pretty big point to prove when he stepped into the box for Loe Delmarva. And did this boy ever deliver, hitting 429 in June of 2020 with an OPS of just shy of 1100? Yes, Chris, but he's 23 and he should be crushing Loe. A. And I concur with those sentiments, and I can see that side. But that's got to be hard, quite literally taking a full two years away from real live in game action. And then again, he delivered after that. Truthfully, I was a little concerned after his promotion to high Aberdeen last season and how he sort of scuffled out of the gate, but if history was any indication, he was going to bounce right back and quickly. After hitting a buck 96 in July, he hit 233 in August, albeit with a little less power, but maybe, just maybe, he cut his swing down to get comfortable and put some numbers up. He then finished his first pro season by hitting 290 with a home run in the month of September. Okay, not earth shattering and certainly nothing to drive up his card prices. However, it is very clear that Kerstad is gaining confidence and finding his groove as he just won the AFL Arizona Fall League MVP. <laughs> Starting the fall season off with a mammoth 424 foot shot, of which he remarked that if anyone taped it, to tag him so his mom could see. I love stuff like that. He won the MVP for more than a tape measure shot though, slashing 35 hits, nine of them doubles and a total of 15 extra base hits. Not only that, did you know this kid was the runner up in the AFL home run derby, being bested 12 to 11 in the final round? That's amazing. It's pretty clear that Kerstad is getting his power back after such a long road and collectors just love power. Kerstad has a great swing and power is showing and it very much explains why Baltimore was so high on him coming out of Arkansas. With any good fortune and a good spring, which I imagine he will have given his success in the fall, Kerstad may find himself in double-A buoy to start the 2023 campaign. Now, there is some downside here and the fact that he's a little bit older at 23 and will be 24 at camp when it starts and kind of may hurt the ceiling to his card values. A late MLB debut can hurt your card prices a little, but I would argue that it does not mean they're worthless. Take a look at Blue Jay great Joey Bats, Jose Batista for you non-Jays fans. 
Did you know that Joey Bats didn't become Joey Bats until he was 30 years old? And to top it all off, with regards to Cursed Dad, there are intangibles to his story as mentioned above, and as collectors we can get sentimental at times. Who doesn't love a good underdog story? Like Rocky! Moreover, as it relates to Heston's first Bowman Chrome cards, the non-autos in color. The centering is, ju is just awful on lots of them, lowering how many gems may one day exist. Not only that, his first Bowman Chrome autos are really condition sensitive. It's as if they're missing a layer or, or a coating, making them susceptible to surface and corner issues. And I can speak to this personally, which I will in a moment. But to hammer the point home here, his base autos of the 107 submitted to PSA, only 4.7 have gemmed. That is not someone having a bad day at PSA. That means the cards are rough and low pop on gems is almost a certainty. BGS isn't much different at all. Always remember the laws of supply and demand. While the price of anything can detach from reality temporarily, supply and demand will dictate prices over time. And if Kerstad becomes a superstar, his gems will vanish. Lastly, his card prices. While somewhat inflated from his, his AFL success, they are somewhat relatively inexpensive and I'll exclude any sales after his award for clarity. On November 10th, a base auto in PSA 9 sold for just $89.99 and just the day before that, another base for $89. You get the idea. Now to be clear, I own a ton of cursed ad. Both from all that money I spent chasing the Orioles in 2020 Bowman Draft. Remember episode 7? And all the cursed ads I purchased and continue to shop for on the secondary market. So I've got a lot. Kerstad may never command huge premiums because of his late start as a pro, but that does not mean that money can't be made over the longer term for this highly touted prospect if he delivers on what Baltimore saw when they chose him second overall in 2020. And to be clear, Baltimore has and is utilizing one of the best farm systems I can think of. Gunner, Adley, Stowers, not to mention my boy Westy, Norby, Colton, Kowser. They're not too far off. And then there's arms like Grayson and D.L. Hall. It's just incredible what Baltimore's putting together. Folks, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you all. Be sure to like this episode and subscribe to our channel if you find our platform to be of value. We continue the march to 1,000 subscribers and each sub is of great benefit. Please remember that anything said on this channel is strictly my opinion and should be taken as such. Go Cursed Ad!